Tenet is the latest film from visionary director Christopher Nolan that has finally started its release rollout across the globe, much to the excitement of many. I was also excited for this movie, partly because I was hoping that the theory that it was about 9-11 was true, and so when I saw that there were advanced screenings at my local cinema, I jumped at the chance to see it. It also did seem pretty interesting to me, besides the 9-11 stuff. A movie about time travel, starring Robert Pattinson, ooh, yeah, and from Nolan, who I'm always at least interested in to some degree. I was eager to check this out as soon as I could. And so what did I think about it? It was good. Just good. Tenet is a film that's marred by its own ambitions to tell a complex and intricate story without explaining all of its ideas properly first, and as a result, struggles to get off its feet in the first half while it gains its stride in the second. It certainly doesn't reinvent the Nolan wheel, but ultimately, I still quite enjoyed myself in the end. But before I get into the positives, I would like to bring up some of the negatives. And the biggest negative of this movie is how awful the audio mixing is with this film. I'm not going to give away my rating yet, but I would probably bring this film up at least half a star if I could have actually heard what the characters were saying. The diegetic audio hadn't been made super loud, and the music wasn't totally overwhelming. The soundtrack by Ludwig Granson is really overbearing and honestly trying way too hard to sound like Hans Zimmer. And the sounds of the film also completely drain out the characters. There's this one scene on a boat, for instance, that was atrocious for hearing dialogue. It was just abysmal. And this is Editing Josh just coming out and saying that I forgot to mention that there's a Travis Scott song at the end of this movie. I don't really know where else I'm meant to bring that up, but I just thought you should know that. It also doesn't help that for good portions of this movie, there are lots of people wearing masks who are trying to expose it dialogue, and you just can't hear them, and that's on top of already really not very good audio mixing, wherein the music is super loud, the diegetic sounds are just overwhelming, and the characters are all just like, yo, it's me, I'm the tenant man, all while the music's going, oh, I'm the tenant guy, I gotta save the world. Just doesn't make any sense, because you can't hear anybody. Which meant I got really confused with the plot, and it certainly doesn't help that the script, particularly in the first half, is pretty muddled and honestly kind of bad. The first 20 to 30 minutes are especially tedious as our protagonist, who is literally only known as the protagonist, played by John David Washington, is having key concepts of the film explained to him very, very terribly. Furthermore, the protagonist's actions don't feel authentically motivated, but rather driven by a sense of duty just to carry out the script. There's no sense of who he is as a character. The dialogue ranges from being incredibly dry to rather quippy within scenes, and the tone of the film is also all over the place. And since the script suffers, all the performances do too. Elizabeth Debicki, for instance, is clearly trying very hard here with the material she's been given, but since Nolan has no idea how to write women, her dialogue struggles to come off as authentic or well-placed. And again, because of the goddamn audio, you can't hear what anyone is saying. I'd say Rob Pattinson gives the best performance here, but even he's subject to being drowned out by the rest of the noise. Veteran actors like Kenneth Branagh really aren't done any favours here with his... less than stellar Russian accent, let's just say. Similarly, as I previously mentioned, the narrative is a bit of a mess because characters like the protagonist don't really feel like realised people and more like pawns to the script. It's unclear who's doing what and why, what this tenant organisation is if it is a bloody organisation, who the villains are, what's bad, etc. I could go on. But a lot of it comes down to the time inversion concept of the film being really, really badly explained in the first act. It is shown a lot more expressively later, and that's when things start to get much better. But when your script literally tells people to just not think about one of its core concepts, I kind of think you're doing something wrong there. The concept is actually pretty simple once you see it used, although it does hurt your brain if you think about it too much. But the film does such a bad job of explaining it initially, it's only when you see it in action that it makes any sense at all. Once the film started doing interesting things with the action surrounding inverse time, I was much more invested, but it took so long to get to that point to feel like I had a grasp of what was happening. And that made things so much more confusing than if Nolan had just shown us how this time inversion concept worked, rather than trying to directly tell us right at the beginning. But even then, the first half of the script is pretty dry and kind of boring. 
I would say Nolan is the king of taking fairly simple concepts and explaining them poorly to the point where it becomes complex and hard to understand. Like Inception or Interstellar. Even though the script is really the only reason that these things elude understanding. But despite all the problems with the first half, the lackluster screenplay, and the TERRIBLE AUDIO, I did end up enjoying this film more than I did it. Once the core concept started to crystallise, and Nolan started doing interesting things with it, I became far more invested in the film as a whole. A lot of thought has been put into how the rules of time work in this film, and it's all the better for it. Neat little things that go a long way for world building. It's these very things that make it really interesting to watch with sequences that are genuinely super cool. The trailer shot of the plane crashing into a building is given a whole new meaning about halfway through, and as the film goes on, it too starts to feel as if it's warping through time, going in reverse as we learn through the eyes of the characters. The trailer shot of the plane crashing into a building is given a whole new meaning about halfway through, and as the film goes on, it too starts to feel as if we're warping through time, going in reverse as we learn through the eyes of the characters. The performances across the board are all quite good as well, with the actors doing a really good job with the lacklustre dialogue they've received. Robert Pattinson steals the show in every scene, his king moment with him saying, I'm going to sleep and just forgetting about the plot, but it also really helps Pattinson's case that he's got the best written character in the form of Neil. But John David Washington and Elizabeth Debicki are also quite good and do commit to their roles despite the fact that the dialogue is often a little bit, it's, it's not great, it's honestly not that great. And as I said, Kenneth Branagh, look, I think he was out of his depth more than anything. And I don't think a quiet Russian accent is his forte, but he tries? And it's a shame because I like Kenneth Branagh, but he was not given great material here. He's either godly quiet or he's yelling in a really silly, goofy way. And there's no in between and it's kind of silly. But really, the star of the show here is the action. The physicality of this temporarily strange world is amazing, and there's particularly one bit in the third act wherein the two teams sync up, which is honestly just super cool. And if you've seen the film, I think you'll agree. There's a really great car chase scene as well that gets explored twice, and both times it's also pretty cool. And the hand-to-hand -hand stuff is fun with all the time stuff, even if the actual choreography is a little bit rough around the edges. The work put into this film is undeniably great, and there's a lot of moments that really shine. But it's a shame that it's bogged down by some pretty fixable issues and some much bigger ones that should have been resolved in the writing room. But to wrap up my thoughts, Tenet is a Christopher Nolan film at the end of the day. And that is either a massive turn on or a massive turn off for you. And that's also the basis of my recommendation. If you're a fan of his other works like Inception or Interstellar or even Dunkirk with the unconventional approach to time, you'll probably like it. Personally, I do like Nolan for the most part, although I no longer think he's the greatest director ever like I did at 14, but I feel like he can indulge himself in his own screenplays and ideas that masquerade as complex, thought-provoking, but really just aren't explained very well. But this is all kind of saved by the fact that he has a really keen eye for directing great action scenes. So I quite enjoyed Tenet once it got going and genuinely started to enjoy myself a lot more once the second half rolled around. And I think if you've been a Nolan fan, even in passing for any length of time, it's worth for you to check this one out. And with that all said and done, I'm going to give Tenet a healthy 6 out of 10. Alrighty, I'm going crazy. I'm going off the hook. So basically, just thanks for watching this little video that I put together, reviewing this Tenet movie that I saw uh, last night. Um... I don't really know what to say, apart from thanks for watching this far. If you feel like it, you know, like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff, feel free to comment and I might, just might dignify you with a response. And apart from that, yeah, I will see you next time I do this. Okay, bye.